Hi everyone, welcome to Primal Reef, another reef update for my 75 gallon saltwater reef tank. Just want to let you know, I'm going to zoom into the tank a little bit just to show you a couple updates that are happening. My corals, if you see my Xena tree there, the Kenya tree, it's doing pretty good. My mushrooms are fully expanded. I have shrimps, I have a cocoa feather duster, I hope that's what you call it. Um, there we go, cocoa feather warm. My frog spawn at the back. I have my green star polyp. A little frag, just kind of took a rubber band and sticked it on. My Montipora is doing really well, really surprised with it. If you can see, all the polyps are fully extended. Going along, again, I just fed my anemone, so. It's it's been doing pretty good. They ha it has its days where it's fully opened, and then it turns into these really skinny tentacles. I'm okay with it. No complaints. Okay, I did purchase a flame scallop, pretty large one. They had a good deal on it for twenty bucks. So I picked it up. Flame scallops been doing really good. Feather duster, my other Montipora, and there's my Dory or blue tang sticking his head out. And my other Montipora again is doing really well. As you can see, um, I'm, I'm actually starting to notice it taking shape in different forms. So in that sense, it's doing pretty good. I just want to talk to you guys about um, just the updates and the benefits of having a sump. Now, you see my top tank pretty well. Going down to my sump now, pretty dirty. Um, pretty disgusting. I'm kind of getting worried. There is some cyanobacteria that's starting in there. Um, I did put a damsel in there. The Chetomorpha algae, it's, it's, it's growing like crazy. Like, um, no questions about that. I had a rock and again, it had some hair algae on it. So that's been exploding like crazy. Um, I haven't been feeding the tank too much. Again, just enough for what the fishes need and my critters need. The cleanup crew. I have a brittle star that's also down there too. But uh, just to zoom in into the the sump here, you can see it, it's it's this system of having a sump and a refugium. It's really beneficial. I highly doubt everybody should get this. So if you look at my sand there, going up to my top sand, there's nothing, zero. No problems whatsoever. My rocks are perfectly fine. Uh, just the other day, I sprinkled a whole bunch of coralline algae that was scraped off another rock. As for the fishes, I, I did tell you guys I had one uh, chromis in there and a lawnmower blenny for about two to three weeks. Uh, and so I purchased a small blue tang. He's been a little shy, but I wanted him to go in the tank first um, after the, the chromis and the lawnmower blenny. Uh, just because he's a little fragile little fish, um, tangs get prone to ache really quick. So I want him to make sure he's the dominant one out of the tank. And he's not going to stress out if I put him 5th or 8th or 10th. Again, you don't want too many fishes per tank, but just want to control the amount of what goes in. So that's my sump at the bottom. Just want to go over some test samples with you guys. Okay, so looking at it here. I have my pH, which is about 8.1. The pH is sitting about 8.1, so it's just where I want it. I'm going to gradually increase it a step at a time. My ammonia is just about, I would say, 0 0.1. It's not much, just a tiny little bit. My nitrites are at 0 and my nitrates are at zero so this is good this is where I want it and my phosphates I have over here phosphates are also zero parts per million that's ppm and what I have here is in the yellow vial I have my alkalinity and in the blue vial I have my calcium so I am using an API reef master kit and uh, showing you on this one, my calcium, I had to put 
24 drops. So 24 drops, according to the API test kits of bottle 1 and 2, is 480 uh, parts per million on my calcium. So that's really fantastic. That's exactly where I want it. And my alkalinity, which is the yellow vial there, it's actually a little high. My alkalinity, I had to put 13 drops for it to come down. Uh, sorry, 13 drops for me to get the vial from blue to yellow. So that's a little high. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on how to bring it down, or what's your ideal alkalinity you keep it at. So if you can just give me a heads up on that, it will be greatly appreciated. My pH in the beginning was around 7.8 which was really low so gradually over a couple of days I use um, aqua vitro it's a liquid form of increasing the pH in your tank I like this method much better than using the powder format which is Kent this stuff is garbage um, it will raise it that's fine I'm not worried about that but what I do really hate was um, the instructions show that you have to dissolve uh, accordingly um, according to uh, the descriptions here. So 20-30 20, 20, gallons for every teaspoon add to the sum directly or the main display. Uh-uh. I don't like that at all. The reason why is the alkalinity, uh, sorry, the, the buffer, the Kent buffer, what happens is the powder form tends to leave um, a, a layer of solid crystals on top of it will and end, any and end of the day guys my whole tank here was all covered in white that's because of the Kent uh, super buffer um, it's supposed to stabilize and rise uh, raise the pH um, again I, I'm never gonna use this Kent product ever again or well not the powder format I'm gonna use a liquid format so again I, I did scrape a lot of it off some of it did go into the tank but uh, I'm fine with it for now so that's that's my little update everything is doing fantastic I have no issues no problems you see a uh, blue tank come out there again as soon as I step away from the tank um, my little salinity level you can see here is zero Oh, sorry, 1.025. So again, this is a saltwater reef tank. That's I'm gonna keep the salinity at that level. Um, some people are comfortable with keeping it at 1.024. Some people say 1.026. I think on the being on the safe side, uh, 1.025 is uh, it's ideal. Um, according to my aquascape or about my aquascape, you guys probably see this little overhang here. Now this is something I just thought of recently and I love this idea. And what that is, is I use a square rod. Um, this is no more than a quarter inch thick, just a little less than a quarter. So what I did with this, I cut a little piece off, I took a lighter and I kind of heated up, um, I heated, I heat up the, the, the rod to where I want to bend it and then I kind of bent it to shape so it holds on to the tank so just like this okay and this I'm gonna actually put right on my overhang uh, my overflow there so I'm gonna put it uh, right on the overflow hanging it on the inside and probably coming down here but yeah just to give you guys a little overlook on it gives you a, a pretty decent uh, look to it so the next rod I'm going to buy, I'm probably going to extend it a little higher. Sorry, I'll drop it down a little bit lower. So it probably will come from here to there or or there. Or probably start from the edge, come down here. Again, you, there's so many different ways to aquascape aquariums. Um, again, a little suggestion, always use acrylic. It's so much easier to work with. And once the coralline algae starts forming in your tank, that acrylic is going to be encrusted with coralline algae. So you are not going to see any clear tubing or pieces in your in your tank. Um, just like my aquarium here, you see the acrylic rod going down there um, through 
my aquascape but I'm not too worried about that is because at this level it's perfectly fine you don't see anything over here you could but again I'm gonna leave it alone let the coral and algae um, take over all my acrylic in the tank and uh, as for the updates sump main display as you guys can see that is a huge benefit of having a sump this just proved me over the years of uh, you know what spend that extra cash make a sump do it properly one time around so you have no headaches don't do the mistake I did of using um, what you call that again uh, using a canister filter I did that in the beginning again canister filters overload inside the filter and you, you can't really see when and what's happening at the end of the day once it overloads it shoots it right back in your main display which you don't want so here you guys go 75 gallon saltwater reef tank thank you for watching if you guys have any questions comments let me know so the question of the day and I do need help in this how to lower your DKH yeah, that's your alkalinity mine is sitting at 13 is it deadly? Is it harmful? Should I do a water change? Give me an update. Let me know. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching everybody. Please rate, comment, subscribe and like.